We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? I have no complaints. Um, we have a lot to get to today, so uh, no BSing, no small talk. Uh, I got distracted by Eric Andre's face in our live chat for some reason. And uh, we, uh, we're doing some camp updates. Uh, today we're doing camp updates... Wednesday show. We're doing our national preview. It'll be a lot like the Big Ten preview we did a couple weeks, but you know, na na national. So Collegiate Chaos on Wednesday. So if you're not already subscribed to the YouTube channel, uh, do all those YouTube things, hit the bell and whatnot. Uh, be, be sure to do that so yeah. that you will be alerted when that episode comes out. A lot more people watch the Monday show than the Wednesday show for some reason. I don't know why. Um, and Kyle, is it? This is the last week. This is our last week before we hit hit our no. um, fall schedule. Is that right? It oh is. God, it is right. We were it we're is, Jared. this is our last two episode week. We're we're well, we won't do a full four next week though, because we won't do. Maybe we will. Fuck maybe it. We'll, we will. Maybe we will. I don't know. Maybe we will. But yeah, we're it's it's that time. We are less than two weeks from from opening kickoff here, Jared. It's <laughs> man, it's yeah. If you're new here during this during the week, during a normal game week, um, and we obviously won't do Scarlet and Grade on on Monday because there won't be a game to grades. But starting uh, week two of coverage. Uh, we'll do Scarlet and Grade on Monday. That's where we, that's us grading Ohio State's performance from the Saturday before. On Tuesday, we do Collegiate Chaos, which is um, us reviewing the national scope of, of games. Um, Wednesday, that's when we do our, our super secret show that only our Patreon, uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com, always be plugging, uh, get. And that's just sort of a goof around fun time. There's nothing too serious happening there. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, it's a chance for us to like digitally hang out with our uh, with our patrons. Um, Thursday is, and we will start this next week. Absolutely, Thursday is know your enemy. That will be us previewing Notre Dame or Arkansas State or whoever happens to be the opponent that week. Uh, Friday will be the sloop picks. Uh, so Friday will be us. Um, basically picking seven games against the spread and really in all actuality, just sort of using that as a, a method of talking about national games. So that's our, that's our normal in week schedule. And at least half of that will be starting up again next week. Yeah. Get excited. All right, Get but let's, excited. let's we're, but we're still in camp season for this week. We are still in camp season, uh, but, but, uh, real quick. Kyle, is that is this? No, we might do a sleep camp next week. Um, but uh, again, there's four episodes a week. We'll probably end up cutting those down like we've been doing an hour through the camp season here. We'll probably end up cutting those down to maybe 30, 40 minutes. Um, but the but yeah, make sure to follow us. Make sure to hit that notification bell so that you can uh, stay up with the sleep cast uh, as we uh, hit mid season mode here shortly. Yeah. <laughs> That's 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 a that's a perfect uh, the perfect response there, uh, Buckeye Zach. Um, our sloop bot in our Discord says, Jared, it's been thirty one thousand three hundred and forty days since Notre Dame last beat Ohio State in football. And that 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 number is not coming down anytime soon. Not this year, no sir. Not right, this let's, year. Let's get into uh, some some camp news, and to start off, fan favorite here, black stripes, some black yeah. stripe removals and we got a lot we have a lot since last time we talked about it so we'll start with um kirk's son zach herb street has his black stripe removed he, he's the transfer um from clemson to ohio state this year and he'll be in the tight end position here and got his black stripe removed there you go also also that same day was on that same day was caleb brown uh, a, a highly, highly 
recruited wide receiver and following him also highly recruited receiver uh, Kion Grace just a few days later and also on that same day it's in the, on the 20th we had a handful um with with Kion Grace uh Dallin Hayden which may be a big part of yeah. this offense that yeah we'll, 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 talk, we'll be talking about the running back position here in a bit Dallin Hayden uh, uh might be playing a bigger role than initially expected yep uh we have Jupe Mitchell, a second-year player, uh, wide receiver, and defensive end Kenyatta Jackson that we've talked about a lot in, rec- in recruiting news the past year. Yeah. So we had six. Six, Jared. In- six. Insert, the, insert the Joker. Six. Yes. Gift there. Yeah, Talks I think we were just goal. asked last week, um, and I can't remember if this was – this may have been during the Super Secret show or it may have been – I forget, but – we were essentially, mm-hmm. or I think it may have been our Wednesday episode where someone asked us, Hey, it doesn't seem like the black stripes are coming off too quickly. Is that a concern? Um, is that a, you know, it seems like they came off a little faster last year. Uh, you know, and of course, then after that question is asked and answered, here, here goes six stripes. Here you go. yep. Six stripes coming. So I, I don't know, maybe making up for some lost time. Um, so I, I'd be interested to see, I, and I don't know like where the black stripe removal is now, like in terms of numbers, especially in, in, in respect to freshmen, I think is more important. Like how many, how many black stripes have come off freshmen versus this class, uh, you know, in, at this point last year versus or. You know what I'm attempting to say. Yeah. All right. Uh, so speaking of, well, I guess not really black stripes or anything. Uh, definitely, definitely news we want to cover here. At, I love when Kyle goes for a transition and then just pulls the ripcord. Like, nope, not happening. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so Ohio State Notre Dame here. And as this is being released here, Jared, 12 days. 12 days. Yes. We're getting close. How? Where has the summer gone? Notre Dame has a pair of starters potentially not playing. Well, definitely one, most likely both of them, not playing uh, against Ohio State. Probably the – I don't know which one would be the biggest one. They're both starters here. But uh, wide receiver receiver Avery Davis out for the season with an ACL injury and also uh, left guard. I believe he's going to be playing left guard. uh, Jarrett Patterson is listed as questionable against Ohio state with a foot sprain and it, all the reports coming out saying that he's unlikely to play that game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I thought he was a tackle, but I, I could be, I could be mistaken. Um, but yeah, the offensive line piece definitely hurts the most. Um, and I say that because they're starting a freshman. I believe he's a redshirt freshman, though, but a, a freshman quarterback. Um, and he's a mobile guy. Uh, so when you're talking about Ohio State and what they can do, you know, what we're expecting them to be able to do from a pass rush, pass rush perspective this year, missing an offensive lineman for a inexperienced quarterback. Um. And, you know, obviously having a good wide receiver out there helps. But I, you know, was, I get, you, you have a run first quarterback with playing his first major game. Mm-hmm. There's going to be a tendency to scramble anyway, if that makes sense. It, for a quarterback that is inexperienced, a lot of the time it's like first read, if not their run. Um, so to me, it seems a little more of a, a little bit more of a concern that they are missing a, a very good offensive lineman in Jarrett Patterson. And from what, you know, and I've, from what little bit I've done spying on some of the Notre Dame, you know, beat writers and whatnot, it, it does appear, I, I don't, I don't know if they feel like they have the guys to replace Pat, like I don't, I don't feel like they feel like their offensive line rooms that deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, so moving on, um, staying in the same realm of injuries. Prior, part of the big big news from last week. Prior, yeah, yeah. is uh, out for the year. Uh, what 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 was it ultimately? Was it a they they said it was like a knee injury? Is all from what I remember. Um, Gangland, do you remember? Did they say? I, I thought it was an ACL. Um, but yeah, the um, I was I was asked Gangland for for injury updates. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a knee injury. Uh, Zach answered, and Zach said yes, it was an ACL. Um, so yeah, he's yeah, out that, for the that, year. That hurts. that hurts. It 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 does hurt. Um, historically speaking, Ohio State does not use their third running back, but it, it did sound like if all of the camp reports were to be believed, and you know sometimes the camp reports aren't to be believed but when the camp reports are to be believed um it sounds like he was not going to be playing a typical third string running back role uh it sounds like they were going to make sure to get him on the field through special teams uh through potential like third down you know third uh third down running back sort of specialty where he would, you know, be a good blocker and a good, you know, out of the backfield receiving option. It sounds like they were going to be doing some stuff to get him on the field as a change of pace back, as a third down back. It sounds like, like I said, uh, and, and, and through special teams, through kick and punt returning. Yep. So it, it does. This is more impactful than a, you know, a third running back. Which again, Ohio State has historically not utilized their third running back much, but it does. So on on from that perspective, it's not that big of a deal if we're looking at this like completely cold heartedly. But on the other side, Pryor's a special player, and they were going to make sure to get him on the field regardless of the quote unquote third string running back position that he held on the depth chart. Yep. Yep. Now. A lot of people might be concerned. Um, they only have three. F- they now only have three uh, scholarship running backs on the on the roster. So people start looking around and they go, "Oh crap! What do we do? What do we do? What do we do?" So people start talking about you know Chip Trainum, yep. who is a you know former running back for Arizona State, former. Uh, Ohio high school running back he transfers in to play linebacker, much like steel chambers. Oh, and by the way, steel chambers, but steel chambers kind of feels like he's going to start at linebacker. So, okay. Maybe not steel chambers, but what about chip train him? Y- yeah, but he's, he's probably in the, he's probably <laughs> nomads off. Do you have any eligibility left? Nomad. <laughs> um, tons. <laughs> uh, so they, they started asking questions like, but Chip Trainum's kind of been the second, probably second. He's in the two deep, maybe for linebackers right now. So do you, do you really want to, and even if we're talking about Chip Trainum, not like 2022, you know, is he in the 2023 plans to play linebacker? And do you want to interrupt that? transition to the linebacker position especially if it's to be the fourth string running back because you know if they're gonna do do you want to interrupt do do you want to take a guy away from the two deep at linebacker to be the fourth string running back yeah at at this yeah at this point i would just say just don't don't mess with it unless correct knock on wood the worst (laughs) yes worst word to happen so I wouldn't I wouldn't even think think about that unless something else comes up during the season. So I, I would just say just three three running backs is perfectly fine as long as all yeah. three stay healthy. No issues, no issues. And part part will be back. Will be he'll he'll rehab. He'll be he'll be back next year. And yeah, wish him the best during his recovery. Absolutely. And but but just real quick. A name to keep an eye on um, that you could potentially 
you could potentially see become a, a an additional running back is um ah oh crap I'm gonna blank on his name is the walk on wide receiver that everyone's real high on this camp can can someone in the chat help me out his name just like left my head oh, I know who you're talking about um Xavier Johnson yes yep. I just had to I just had to think, just had to think. Uh, Xavier Johnson uh, was a high school running back. Um, depending upon their plans and what they expect to happen with Dallin Hayden, maybe they don't want to put Dallin Hayden in right away. Maybe if you're just looking for a guy to eat up some carries in, you know, late games. There, there, Ohio State does have a few walk-ons to if you really wanted to go down that deep as well. Yes, but they, I would almost expect them to go Xavier Johnson before he's, I think Xavier Johnson's one of these guys who's now been with the program mm -hmm. forever. I feel like he's on that JT Barrett plan right now. Um, yeah between a red shirt and a COVID year, like I feel like he's, he's been with the program longer than most of the coaches. Yeah. Is he a All preferred right. walk on? Uh, I mean, he's preferred at this point. Um, the, the, uh, I, 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 I don't think he's on scholarship yet. Although I would anticipate if they have a scholarship left over, Xavier Johnson will get it. All right. All right. Let's let's move on to the next topic here. Cade Stover. Yeah. We talked to, we talked uh, briefly about Cade Stover last week here. He's continuing to nail it in in the camp here. Uh, it's really sounded like Cade Stover's winning that tight end position there. Yeah. Uh, so if it's Cade Stover, if this is Cade Stover's uh, position, what? What does this mean for Royer? What does this mean for G Scott? Yeah. Um, real, real quick before we, before we move away uh, from the uh, prior talk, Nomad asked, did Pryor get a medical red shirt? Well, um, he'll just get a regular red shirt. Cause I don't believe did Did he retain his red? Is, was he a, technically a red shirt freshman this year? Um, let me look. Did, Okay, I, I'm getting feedback in the chat that yes, he did use his red shirt last year. Uh, he so did, yep. he yep. he could apply for it. Yes, um, yes. that doesn't mean he'll get it, but he should he be able should. to apply for it. He um, should get it. I still I don't think that's an issue though. If I'm being honest with you, um, I feel like he could very well still only be here through like this season, then the next season, then the next season, like he, he's probably on a four. I think he was originally probably on the mindset of a three year plan at this ACL tear probably puts him on a four year plan. So I don't expect him to use all of his, all of his eligibility anyway. So I, I don't, I don't necessarily think that that's a big deal one way or the other. Yeah. All right, Jared, uh, tight end here. Kate Stover looking like he's going to be winning the that yeah, tight yeah. end position here. What does what does this mean for Royer and uh also for G Scott? Um I think this does mean that Stover is going to be getting most of the reps at tight end. Now that of course does not mean that G Scott and Joe Royer are going to sit on the bench. There will be multiple tight end sets. Uh there will be probably like third down packages that could, if it's an obvious passing situation, you know, you could still see, you could absolutely still see G Scott get into there. But if we're setting like a priority list right now, I think you'd look at it as Stover's the first string, Royer's the second string and G Scott as potentially like a specialty tight end. Um, and I know G Scott um, doesn't want to be thought of, uh, they had media availability this week. I, I know he doesn't want to be thought of as like a wide receiver playing tight end. 
Uh, but I also think that the transition can take some time. And I don't necessarily think uh, sort of reading between the lines of, you know, what Kevin Wilson had to say. Um, I, I don't necessarily know if G. Scott is there yet as far as, you know, being a fully faceted tight end. Tight end slot would be amazing. And a lot of what, again, a lot of the talk coming out of camp right now is that if you think Cade Stover can't go out there and catch passes and run. He apparently spent the entire off season becoming a better route runner. Um, he, he does not want to be thought of in the same, in the same way that G Scott doesn't want to think of be thought of as, Oh, G Scott. He's, he's just a, uh, he's just a wide receiver playing tight end in that same vein. Cade Stover does not want to be thought of as an offensive tackle playing tight end. He wants to be thought of as a full-fledged tight end that can do it all. Now, we can he can want to be talked about. All, all, Ohio State had had Jeremy Rucker last year who did everything. Who did everything, but even then leaned more like pass catcher. You know, even though he came back for a senior year to become a better run run blocker and all of that. But here's the thing. We still don't throw the damn ball to the tight end. Yeah, there's that. And there if you that. think that's going to change this year. Nope. Let's, then let's I do, think you have to, bad, pat bad listen, listen pattern bad pattern recognition. Episodes ago when, when we were talking about when they go four four or five wide, but we even still even see the tight end. <laughs> Again, either, if you put way. tight ends on the field, you're taking wide receivers off the field, which is inarguably Ohio State's deepest position right now. Yep. All right. Uh, so on the same lines of the tight end here, uh, next topic here, Jared, you have interior O-line and short yards concerns. That, that, was, that was one thing that Ohio State really struggled in in a lot of the games was even just getting a simple yard, two, three yards. And it was, it was painful. It was painful yeah, seeing yeah. that last year. Uh, so are, are the new guards right now struggling? Can this be corrected for, uh, for the season that's ahead? So one of the first questions you have to ask yourself, if like the interior of the offensive line is <laughs> nomad wants nomad you have to pick a position buddy just like Cade Stover you have to pick a position if you can't play both running back and guard just like from a body type perspective um if you how do I say this yeah, so just like this a sprint, a scrimmage, just like a spring game, you have to ask yourself if the interior of the offensive line is struggling, is that good news because the defensive line is playing well because the defensive tackles are playing well? Or is that bad news because the interior of the offensive line isn't playing well? When will LJ say D line is 12 deep? I think he has. You think he's already referred to the defensive tackle room as 12 or is as, as five deep um, defensive tackle. I don't know if there's I don't know if there's like a a number one defensive tackle at this time. But my God, they have they have five guys who can all be they're all like first string quality. Yep. Yeah. So I'm saying the D line is just insane. You 100 percent. Just got to. Just got to get them the the right plays and put them in the right position to to do their thing, and I think we'll see that this year. Yeah, the the so yeah, you have like five defensive tackles. You have at least at least four defensive ends. If you want to be generous and if you want to go deep, you can make that six. You legitimately could make that six, and you know. 
So six plus five, that's 11. That's close enough to 12. Mm -hmm. Stop giving Jared squirrel comments. Hey, people like my squirrel comments. Caden Curry could be seeing snaps. You know, I'm hearing positive things, but once again, if you're giving Caden Curry snaps, that means you're taking snaps away from Sawyer or JTT or Zachary Harrison. It's sorry. We're still, yeah. we're, uh, yes. Thank you. Nomad. We're supposed to be talking about the O-line. Um, but yeah, one of the issues you have with the offensive line right now is both of the guards are new, new in their position. Um, one of the guys is a true sophomore. They're all sort of working together for the first time. <laughs> no, right. Nomad, Nomad has both made himself the backup running back, a starting guard, and is now trying to take over as the co-host of the show. So right. I, I think one of the questions we have to ask here, is this a talent issue? Is this a scheme issue? Is this a lack of, what's the word I'm looking for? Chemistry issue, um, which is a thing, like, of course, what you're going to hear out of camp right now is just, oh, they need to work together more. They need to work together more. They just need to work together. Uh, Nomad says he trusts Fry. Uh, I do, too, quite frankly. Um so, but like I said, the, the the line you're hearing out of out of camp right now is like they just need to mesh more. They just need to mesh more. But of course, like of course, that's what they're going to say, right? Of course, that's what they're going to say. No one's going to come out and say they suck, and we as coaches suck, and everyone's you know they're not going to say that. Yep. But hopefully, it's true. Hopefully, it's true, and they just need some time to mesh. Um, if not, then. You know, we might continue to have short yardage issues. And as Zach points out, it might just be that the interior of the defensive line is really good right now. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I, I really do like I really do like this offensive line, Jared. Even even with the concerns about, uh, especially with uh, how young some some of them are on there. But I mean, you you still got the leaders leadership on there with uh with uh Jones and Paris Johnson I I I think they'll be able to to make things work this year and heck there's even a lot of uh media out there saying that Ohio State has the best offensive line group in the country and so uh, <laughs> that's that's generous. The best offensive line group in the country is very generous. That's that's generous. <laughs> uh, no, who who said that? <laughs> I have to I have to look it up, but I I saw I saw that coming around last week. But. Listen, um, what we don't like to do on this show is sugarcoat shit, and that sounds like some sugarcoated shit. <laughs> I actually have, hold on. I, it's actually in my show notes for Wednesday. I have what um, pick six previews says are the best offensive line groups in the country. They have Ohio State third. So maybe it's not as sugar coated shit as I thought. Yeah, so um, I, it's going to be fine. They're going to be fine, Jared. It's going to be fine. I don't, I don't think it's going to be an issue here. Um, I, I think from what the reports are coming back with, with, with what coach day understands the concerns with, uh, running in short yardage situations, really emphasizing that this year, I, I think they'll be fine. They'll be fine this year. All right, Kyle, now that we've talked about the offensive line and we couldn't help ourselves by kind of talking about the defensive line <laughs> as well, you couldn't, you couldn't help your, yourself, Jared. This this is this is a team. We are a team, Kyle. There is no yes. you. Did you, did, did you hear? Did you hear that, guys? Did you hear that? There, there is only we. <laughs> yep, yep. There is only we. I, I, I heard that too. I heard that too, guys. <laughs> where, where where is it at? Hold on. 
Hold on. He, he Hold said on. it. He said it. He said. What did I say? What did I say? He said. Team Kyle. We Is that what I team. said? You said here, we are a team, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. 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 Spam your team, Kyle's. Yeah. Spam them up. Unfortunately, Jared's going to have to do the edits because I'm traveling this week. So uh, we'll, we'll see if it gets in there or not. It won't. <laughs> it won't. All right. Defensive line here. Uh, so how, how long has this been going on? It's been going on for a long time with people uh, negative recruiting against uh, Coach Johnson about, oh, he, he's going to retire this year, Jared. Hey, Jared. Hey, Jared. Hey, hey Jared. He's going to retire this year. Hey, a recruit, he's going to retire this year, come over to us. He's not going to last much longer. Well, it sounds like Coach, Coach Johnson is not necessarily getting tired of it, but he kind of wanted to talk about it uh, earlier this week. Uh, so he was asked that question, and his answer was, people, people ask that question all the time. My retirement plan is way away from here. I enjoy coaching, and the day that I stop enjoying coaching – and having a passion for what I do, then I'll do that. But I don't get up in the morning and say, well, this is it. I don't do that. That's not the way I function. I get up every morning dying to get into this building and coach those guys. Now, when I can't do it anymore, it'll tell me. Right now, I'm not telling myself anything. I got to get going. It's time to go play a game. Talking a good game. Exactly, Zach. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have my suspicion on how much longer he has. Um, as Austin points out, he's only 70, which, you know, I don't think 70 is. Uh, Saban and Coach Johnson are the same age. Yeah, but I also have Saban done in a couple years as well. <laughs> like. Yes. I'm I'm on the record saying there's zero chance in hell he travels to Columbus. <laughs> but yeah, it's. I mean, this still, this still won't have other coaches negative recruit Johnson because, like, like I was pointed out, he's only seventy. But I think I think him at least saying this will help help out some in the recruiting trail. But it's it'll be fine though. It just is just another, just another thing to talk about. Another thing that put out there for for recruits to to read up on. <laughs> Seventy is the new forty five. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Um, September eighteen, twenty twenty seven, Austin. So, yeah. yeah, still a few years out. Oh, right. I, 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 I kind of beat you to it. I, I beat you to it by just a little bit. All right. Uh, probably the biggest news, Jared. Uh, not to Ohio State, but some about Ohio State. Uh, it's, it, it's, a, it's a lot about Ohio State. Let's be real. It's, let's talk about this new media deal that the uh, Big Ten has. Dale? Wow, you, you southerned up the word deal. Deal. <laughs> yeah, we got to get you out. We got to get Jared, we have to get you out of the South. Jared, help me. Help me. Help me, Jared. <laughs> help me. Wow. So, yeah, uh, Big ACC Ten country. Yeah, he, he's in the heart of ACC country. ACC. Yeah, I'm, I'm next to all ACC. I'm not near any SEC teams. What is the, what is the closest? Would it be South Carolina, the Gamecocks? Yeah, probably South. Yeah, probably South Carolina. All right. Yeah. Uh, new media deal. Um, just just to summarize my thoughts on this, about a year ago, uh, Kyle and I basically did a podcast and said, before too long, we're talking about the big two. There will be two super conferences. They will represent the North and the South, period. It is the power two. And oh, the Dixie Com the Dixie League. <laughs> the Dixie League and the Union. Um, 
the the so one of the reasons why this is the way it is, and by the way, Kyle and I, I would say have been have been proven correct by by that prediction with USC and UCLA essentially leaving the pack and joining the Big Ten, which is just the first step. It is only the first step. And by the way, oh the the California state legislate blah 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 blah. blah. I don't care. They tried the same thing in Texas when Texas A&M decided to go to the SEC. Nothing happened. And all the thing the UC, only thing UCLA has to do is show them TV contract, TV contract, what this will do for our bottom line. Uh, yep. That's it. That's all. That's all you got to do. Why? Because the Big Ten just signed a seven b- 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 billion dollar. TV rights deal. Billion with a B. Seven yes. billion dollars. Yeah, correct. ESPN does not have that money. Oh, they, yeah. they, they do. They're just going to give it to the SEC instead. They have and they will continue to do. Because, once again, this is now a power two. Yeah. So when, when the USC and UCLA join, they'll be like, oh, hey, hey, here's here's. Our, our media rights. Hey, look at the look at look at this number right here. It's a seventy five million annually for each school. Yeah, seventy five million dollars to each school. UCLA getting caught. No, we just talked about that. Nomad, I, it, it's not happening. Yeah, it's not. The the no only way. thing their no their way. school president, their board, their chancellor, um. Only thing they have to do is show them the the dollars and cents. That's it. Pac-12 making no money off of television. The Big Ten, as Kyle just said, will be sharing. What did you say, Kyle? Once the the two West Coast teams join, would you say the share was five million? Yeah, because the Pac-12 sucks. But here's the thing. The Pac-12 just doesn't suck anymore. It's dead. It's on life support. Can't Cal system block them? I'm not worried about it. Nomad, I'm just not worried about it. It's, it's, I'm, I'm not worried about it. I just got done saying why I think you were gone for a second. Um, I'm not worried about it at all. UCLA is coming to the Big Ten. I don't care what the what state agency has to say about anything. All right, let's see here. There's there's some other big things here I want to want to mention here. So da da da. So it's a seven year media rights deal. Fox, CBS, and NBC. Uh, it will feature Fox for noon games. CBS will host three thirty games and NBC night games. Uh, let's see here. There's also part of the deal. NBC has, um, is going to be using Peacock for streaming platform. We've heard about that either last week or two weeks ago that Notre Dame was having part of their games over on, uh, Peacock streaming platform as well. Yep. Uh, I think the interesting thing here was the big 10 football championship on how it was being divided. So, uh, starting next year, so 2023 will be Fox in 24, CBS, and then back to Fox in 25, then the NBC 26, then back to Fox, and then CBS and Fox. So it seems like Fox is getting the the bigger end of the deal here as every other year they're in it. But yeah, that, that's right, Austin. Yeah, Fox, CBS, Fox, NBC, Fox, CBS, Fox. Yes. Yeah, I mean... It makes sense because Fox still has the tier one rights. Yep. Uh, so you think about think about the TV deal in three tiers. Fox has tier one. The Big Ten Network has tier three. And it used to be that ABC had tier two. Yeah. ABC slash ESPN had tier yeah. two. So but now Fox and NBC will be splitting that tier two. 
And I think the Peacock move is a huge deal as well, especially for NBC, who, yeah. if, if it's not painfully obvious to everyone, is is is, is owned by NBC. Um, so, and it, one of the reasons why that is is because Amazon and Apple were both big in that negotiation as well. So it's a I I think Amazon's online player sucks. So I'm really glad it wasn't Amazon. I don't I don't care for their online streaming service. Um, I've never used the Apple one. Um, but yeah, uh, so one thing about the CBS that to, to keep an eye on. First off, let me let me say this before we go too much, too much deeper too yeah, too much deeper into this. This does not affect the upcoming season. You still have the tier two games on ESPN slash ABC for one more year. Um, can't do night games on CBS because the broadcasters can't miss the early bird special at, <laughs> I'm going to assume you said either Golden Corral or yeah, Apple Go base. Golden Corral. <laughs> yeah. So here, here, Jared is the, uh, the broadcasting split that put up on, put up in the chat here. So the, First year in 23, next year, uh, Fox is, uh, I'm just looking at here, yeah. So Fox is getting about 24 to 27 games, around 40 games, Big Ten Network. Look at the big brain on Kyle. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I think because you put the, the thing gotcha. in the notes. C CBS, CBS has seven. Uh, games and Peacock will have eight, but then you look at after 23. So starting 24, that's when you see CBS doubling the games there. And you'll notice that Fox and Fox will have even more games and CBS will have just about the same number of games. And that's because after, after that time, you're not going to see any big 10 games on ABC or ESPN. Yeah. Start. In fact, it's the, the TV deal starts July 1st, 2023. So if you're, you know, an Olympic sport, if you're into one of the Olympic sports in particular, so obviously this won't affect the upcoming football season. This won't affect the upcoming basketball season. Um, and if you're wondering, Oh, does this affect Olympic sport? Yada, yada, yada that I care a lot about July 1st, the TV deal starts July 1st. Um, there will be an increased number of Olympics. Uh, this is theoretical. I don't know if this is official. There will be an increased number of sports on Peacock uh, Olympic sports. So uh, you'll have a lot more Olympic sports uh, that were previously on the Big Ten Network, uh, potentially working their way over to Peacock. And again, that is starting July 1st. Yep, yep. Oh, let's see. What else did they have here? So in 23, CBS, uh, it's going to be interesting. CBS yes. will be broadcasting both SEC and Big Ten games and then full-time Big Ten in 2024. Uh, basketball is going to be <laughs> – that's just a whole another – deal that i'm not even i don't think we have a lot i don't think we have a great deal of clarity yet on exactly what is happening with basketball other than to say i think cbs is getting priority i think cbs basically has the tier one package for basketball and holtman said games still on espn he's sort of because there are like i'll just say sort of it's it's a lot it's complicated and i don't fully understand it um but the I, I believe CBS essentially has uh, CBS will broadcast both SEC Big Ten games before transitioning full time to Big Ten in 2024. Um, hold on. Where's the basketball stuff? Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, CBS yeah, yeah. will continue to be the home for men's championship, the uh, men's championship game and Big Ten tournament semi semifinals. Um, it adds the women's championship games to its rights package for the first time in 23-24. CBS will broadcast anywhere from 9 to 11 men's basketball games in 23-24, uh, extending that to 15 games in 24-25. Uh, and that will then take effect for the rest of the, the year. All games will be simulcast on Paramount, 
which is CBS's streaming platform. Who has the Big Ten ACC challenge? Well, about that. I don't know how much longer that has to live. Yeah. <laughs> um, Paramount streaming is atrocious. I, I don't I don't use it. That's yeah, CBS, okay. isn't it? Yeah. Par Paramount is CBS uh, is Viacom. It's all it's all Viacom. Mm -hmm. All right, Jared, I think I think that's it. We are. Well, uh, one thing, here, by the so. way, I think is really interesting. I want to mention before we hop out, Kyle, All right. is that there will they will draft the games from my from yeah. my understanding, from a season long perspective. Mm -hmm. There's going to be. And by the way, I wish to God they'd air this on one of the uh, Paramount, Peacock, Big Ten Network, FS1. I want them to air this. OK, I want to watch this. They're going to draft the games. Um, Big Ten and Fox will coordinate a draft with games being chosen by the networks across each of the seven years of the deal. Fox will have the first pick each year. Uh, Preseason or during the season? Preseason. Um, CBS uh, will have the first pick, which, by the way, Fox is basically... Um, it's always going to be Ohio State, Michigan. So the one yep. thing you will know for sure for the next seven years, Ohio State versus Michigan will be played at noon on Fox. Now, the second game will be picked by, uh, I think, Fox or excuse me, CBS and NBC are flip flopping. So one year, the second round pick or the second overall pick will go to one of them and so on and so forth. And then I, I, don't, I think at that point, it just sort of like then the third pick or excuse me, the fourth pick goes to Fox and then yada, 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 so on down the line. And by the way, one of the coolest things about this deal, um, uh, can we get a Sloopcast episode with each of you representing one of the network's and Sloop Mods representing the other networks, we draft games. Oh my God, Austin, that's amazing. Let's do that next year. I am gonna put put that in the wasteland chat, and then you're a mod. Pin it. Um, we will do that next year. Holy crap, Jared! Holy crap! Yeah, <laughs> I wanted a reaction out of you. Uh, <laughs> Cucho is amazing. <laughs> okay. The <laughs> holy crap, he's he, he's sorry. The the crew's playing at the same time here, and Cucho bringing bringing life to the crew here up to one right now. Back to back, Kyle, day. back so, to back yeah, goal here. No mad, because because I'm the squirrel. I remember I'm the squirrel. Um, one of the other things that I think is the biggest piece of, um, I think you have to use the bomb right now, Nomad. He's, uh, Jug is still working. Oh, nope. There it was. Uh, you did it manually. That's cool too. Um, the, one of the coolest things about this is how they have this time slotted. Cause like you hear us talking about Paramount network and Peacock and all of these different streaming services. And some of the games are going to end up on FS one. And some of the games are end up on the big 10 network. And you're like, fuck, how many different streaming services do I need? And it's annoying. I get it. It's annoying. One of the good, one of the great parts about this is that there will be three and it will be in the three biggest of the weekend. There will be three big 10 network game or not big 10 network. Excuse me. Three big 10 games played over the air every week that you can pick up with a digital antenna at noon on Fox at three 30 on CBS at seven 38 o'clock on NBC. 
and you can get that for free with a digital antenna over the air. And uh, CBS 330, fuck the SEC. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the CBS thing is complicated until 2024. It'll be weird in 2023. Sometimes it'll be the Big Ten. Sometimes it'll be the SEC. Uh, but in 2024, it's full-time Big Ten. Um, but as, as far as starting in 2024, you'll have three games broadcast over the air for free. And it will, in theory, be the three biggest games of the week. You can get wall-to-wall premier Big Ten games slotted accordingly through the day. And that's pretty cool. I think that's real cool. I'm really excited about that. I think that's huge for the network, especially, especially with it all with the Big Ten becoming a West Coast conference as well. That you can have, you know, that can be like your West Coast special, practically. NBC, you know, having USC and Oh man, USC versus Ohio State. I just love saying I, it. I can't wait. I, can't I, wait. I love saying USC versus Ohio State. I'm sure I'm sure I'm sure Gus Johnson would love that too. Oh I don't know if Gus Johnson gets to do that game. I mm. I I don't think we're gonna be playing a lot of noon games against us against uh USC. That does not feel that does not feel right. <laughs> playing yeah. a game yeah. at like a really bad body clock for one of the teams. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Especially Ohio state and USC with Lincoln Riley. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yep. So, yeah, I think this is great for Ohio state. I think this is great for the big 10. I think this is great for college football. Although I know some people will disagree with that. I, I know a lot of people are going to miss the traditions and like, I get that. Like, but the PAC 12 is dead. It's dying. It's going to die. The yeah. Big Ten is not done expanding. If you it, think they're done it, expanding, Gene, you're wrong. I mean, Gene even said that he's projecting 20. They're, they're not hiding it either. No. Normally the Big Ten, and I think at one point right after the USC-UCLA announcement, they're like, well, we're not really going to force anything. And if something happens to have... And then, in, like, since the TV package was announced, they've been like, yeah, we're looking to add more. Like they're just calling it. UNC will be a Big Ten school by 2026. I have UNC. Kyle and I predicted UNC. We we did uh, the Big Two revisited uh, a month or two back, and we put UNC. It, it makes sense for UNC in the Big Ten. Big Ten. That if, if if the ACC was going away, it makes sense for UNC to go. NC State's not happening. Mm -hmm. I'll let you know that right now. It's just academically not happening. Um, Oregon will, I think will happen. Um, but yeah, you guys, if you want, if you want a detailed view of how we think the big two will shake out, who ends up in the sec, who ends up in the big 10, uh, I think it was it a collegiate chaos episode, Kyle might've been, I think it was, a, yeah, it, nomad says yes. Uh, it was a collegiate chaos episode. It was during the summer. You can go watch that. Uh, it's, it's, I think one of our better episodes from the summer. So you can go check that out for yourself. All right, Kyle, we're running a bit long. So, um, everyone join our Patreon, follow us on TikTok, follow us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram, uh, follow us on, I already said YouTube. I'll say YouTube again. Um, Probably Cal, Oregon, UNC, Washington, if you had to guess. Uh, I mean, in that guess, you're assuming Notre Dame says no, and I would not make that assumption. I think the next announcement is is Stanford and and um and, and Notre Dame. I think that's the next announced play. We'll see. And by the way, I don't think it's stopping at 20. I don't think it's stopping at 20. Um, 
the Big Ten having a relationship with NBC, I think, helps this. I think Nomad actually asked that question at some point, and I didn't had a, didn't have a chance to answer it. I do think that absolutely helps grease the grease the gears a bit. Um, I don't think the NBC deal solidifies it, but it helps. Yeah. Um, I think the next announced. The next announced will be Stanford, Notre Dame, Washington, and Oregon. And I, but I, but that's, that's not me saying that's 20 and then they're done. Cause I think it goes to 24, but I think that's the next announced. I think those are the next four. I think those four are the next four. Yeah. I, I'd be happy with that. I'd be happy with those. All right. So yeah, guys go join all the things, buy some t-shirts, uh, you can go to the sloopcast.com and just see all of our links to all of our different things. That's the sloopcast.com. It's just a link tree page. That's all it is. So you can go there and find all of our links to all of our things. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I have one and uh, <laughs> recruiting news, actually, Jared. Uh, Jaden Bonsu uh, has made his verbal commit to Ohio State. Uh, actually, last I- last Sunday. I think we talked about this on, on the Wednesday episode, didn't we? Didn't this happen in time for us I, to talk about it on the Wednesday episode? Maybe. Austin says but yes. I, 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 I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll say it again, though. So Jane Bonson. There you go. Safety, say it again. Safety out of, out of uh, New Jersey. Big pickup for Ohio State. Very big pickup. Yes. All right. All right. That's, that's it. That's it. That's the episode. Cucho is amazing and leading, leading the crew to another MLS Cup this year. Um, yeah, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by Defiance Ohio, uh, which is, which is a band who is not from Defiance Ohio. They're from Columbus, but the name of the band is Defiance Ohio. Uh, that, that particular tenor in my voice was for the Sloop Cats. They, they understand what that tenor means. Um, so yeah, with all that being said. We do. Yeah, I was doing it in the same. Yeah, the shit show. I was doing it in like that same pattern. Austin got it. Thank you, Austin. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so that's it for this show. Uh, he must pay attention. <laughs> oh, boy. OK, that's it for the show. That's it for the show. Once again, uh, this is Ohio State. What am I doing? I. I'm falling apart at the end. Chat got me distracted. Squirrel. This was the Ohio State podcast by the Sloopcast. I think is what I was trying to say, but that doesn't make any sense. Uh, but okay, let me let me just let me try the outro again. I'm gonna try the outro once again. Um, once again, this is Defiance Ohio. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters for the fifth time. This is Defiance Ohio.